what drew you to this project? Um, well, a couple of things. Um, I previously had worked with uh, Joe Sill, and he's the director of Robophobia. Uh, and I uh, was really very excited to work with someone that um, was so, had such an innovative view of, um, of uh, what he could do with Robophobia. Um, you know, I'd seen uh, his previous work before, and so I was excited to kind of, you know, jump in and, and, and do something uh, with him. Uh, and then secondly, the, uh, the other part, uh, was, which was really kind of enticing to me, was kind of the subject matter of, you know, what robophobia is and kind of mm -hmm. these, these different uh, vignettes of um, this anthology, rather, of, um, of, of storylines uh, for phobias. Uh, and and then you know I it kind of to to receive an opportunity as uh, an Asian male to be the lead of 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 a project uh, you know I've been uh, you know my first film was uh, in two thousand four the perfect score and so it's been a considerable amount of time that I've been working uh, in this industry and uh, to receive an opportunity where I am able to uh, play the lead role and kind of um, have the audiences kind of go on this journey with me uh, was important and so knowing that um, robophobia um, when it starts uh, the, the my character kind of starts off in a passive role um, mm -hmm. and kind of uh, through the lead role uh, you're able to kind of go on this journey this stretch of journey for you know an hour and a half two hours I was able to kind of um, uh, build on this character that goes into being really taking charge and leading uh, in his life, which is important to me, especially uh, seeing as how Robophobia started, you know, um, in the opening uh, sequence and titles, mm -hmm. you have um, my character um, who looks like me, who is Asian, um, and he is being aggressed um, by uh, people that um, start to pinpoint him as someone um, that's otherizing him and, and starts to kind of uh, a racially motivated um, kind of interaction happens. And so it was uh, those kind those kind of combination of things really kind of brought me forward to say, hey, this is a project I really want to be a part of. And uh, I'm so glad and excited that uh, I was able to do it. The dramatic rise of real life hate crimes against Asian Americans is terrifying. What happened in Atlanta is just heartbreaking and angering, you know, racist hate towards Asian American community is not something Hollywood, really the rest of America has ever truly confronted, but you have mm -hmm. in this film and this is so necessary. Can you, can you speak on this? Yeah, thank you again for um, using your platform uh, yeah. for, for the power of good. Um, from my heart to you and to your uh, viewers, I really appreciate that. Um, it's not every day that you are able to uh, speak about this um, on such a public level. Um, especially, you know, tying in, as you said, the, the news um, of the rise in hate crimes, especially towards the Asian and the Asian American community. But what I wanted to kind of highlight is um, we can definitely, it's, my heart is so sad uh, by what's happened um, for the communities um, that uh, have been affected by this. Uh, right now um, in the news, it's, done, it's been the Asian, the Asian American community, but previous to this, uh, we've seen the rise um, of hate crimes towards and in the news, especially uh, to the African-American community and then to uh, the Latinx community, to the women. Um, it's just been to um, kind of find a way to polarize the community. But I really believe the American community, um, in my experience, is about unity and is about inclusion. Um, and my opportunity here as, um, as a filmmaker and to really um, is to highlight um, the possibilities of lives that can happen, you know, through storytelling. Um, and so uh, when uh, this opportunity came by to speak about this, you know, I, I remember speaking with the director, Joe Sill, um, who uh, is himself a person of color, is, and um, we spoke about this, you know, he is um, uh, Asian. And um, he, when we first were going to tackle this project, we, I remember sitting down with him being like, you know, this is really fantastic that um, this project highlights that this happens um, because it's something that I personally didn't have to stretch far to tap into. Uh, he didn't have to stretch far to tap into. Uh, it's happened to us um, throughout our lives. Um, and so I am very grateful that um, the opportunity came to kind of highlight this in this film. And I do hope that people take away an entertainment value from this too, um, that um, we are able to show a make-believe 
version of what happens, um, but that people can take away the reality that this is affecting people in their community uh, and that they can do something about it. So I wanted to take a moment right now to um, uh, highlight the positives that are happening. Um, I think a lot has been said about the negatives. And uh, one thing that I can definitely say is that I am so encouraged um, by the community that uh, has reached out, uh, different communities, uh, and what I call the American community as a whole. Um, you see these different kinds of communities reaching out cross-culturally uh, through different areas and different networks uh, to re reach out to say that they also stand in solidarity uh, together with those that are being oppressed. And so I wanted to say thank you to those, to those people and those organizers. Um, on my Instagram, there are uh, uh, places that you can donate to uh, and uh, organizations uh, that are helping uh, the cause, not only for uh, the Asian and Asian American community for the Stop Asian Hate um, program, but uh, different communities that are um, over time that, that have been aggressed. So uh, thank you. I'm glad that you kind of explained where people can Know, where they can go to get help and get more involved because you know posting something on social media is one thing but actually taking action you know donating yeah. you know pledging sending something to a friend like just continue to spread the word and start those conversations so I'm glad that you uh, brought yeah, that up. Yeah this is something that um, I've recently you know what it's just been really touching um, hearing and feeling the love from people that I know that I've worked with even those that I don't know uh, particularly very well have been reaching out and so I have uh, what initially felt very overwhelming uh, and very separate to me is it, a strange feeling that you get when you feel being aggressed. It's almost like an out-of-body numbness that happens. And so once I was able to acknowledge that this actually is happening and it is directed towards me, what can I do? Uh, because they're also reaching out for help is that I started to pass, pass it on and start to pay it forward and reach out to others. Uh, so I'm hoping that others can do the same. In this film, you brought this up as well. Your character is robophobia or the fear of robots. Mm -hmm. Did you, um, we talked to Hannah Mae Lee yesterday and she um, was talking about how she, uh, you know, kind of her, her phobia kind of stuck with her a bit. After <laughs> filming and getting into this role for, the, for this film, if, you, if it kind of stuck with you a bit, do you kind of like have a different like mind, a different kind of like um, approach towards like certain phobias? Do you just think about things a little differently now? Yeah, you know. <laughs> I gotta say, I mean, it, this this um, AI robot reality that we're living in is uh, is coming in fast. Yeah. Um, even the fact that we're sitting here and I'm sitting here at my home talking to you, having a live conversation with you, and it's a legit conversation. It's not just like exactly you know, two friends. Like, oh, look at this cool technology that we're <laughs> we're like doing it together like yeah um uh, and commerce is being made from this right yeah. um and so it definitely has in a way stuck with me like I, I i'm not gonna lie like there have been definite moments that i have gone up to my alexa and pressed the like you know mute button and then speak about what it's all about and then unmute it because you know this reality that um uh siri or uh I think, what did she just turn on? Um, Siri or Alexa is listening at all times, uh, is real and it's only going to get more and more. So I am in a way a little bit more cautious about um, awareness that technology is listening and listening in. Speaking of robots, um, mm -hmm. you started the first two seasons of Westworld and we're in an episode of season three. Is there mm -hmm. any possibility we can see you returning for the see for season four? I love, uh, I love being on that show. It's such a wild ride. Uh, I would just be thrilled to be a part of it. Yeah, and I'm, you know, it. I'm just excited as you are. So we'll see.